Welcome to the In Between Podcast. This is your host, Haido, and today we have a great show for you. This week we got the finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and we will be discussing a character arc, story arc, and where the show's going to go from here, possible theories, but we're also going to talk about social themes. There's a lot of things to discuss, so uh, let's get ready for this conversation. Um, first of all, I, uh, I want to thank all of you who are supporting either the channel or you're supporting the podcast on Spotify or any of the other places where you listen to this podcast. Um, thank you for your messages of support for the podcast. And so I honestly just want to thank you, all of you, for listening and sticking with me through this uh, through this podcast. So thank you so much. Um, like I said, today we're going to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier and O. M G, what an amazing show! Um, and I think the first thing that I want to talk about today is just how amazing the show feels. We this is the second uh, show for Disney. Uh, the first one was One Division, and One Division was so crazy. There were so many things that we uh, didn't expect. We didn't know what was going to happen. We know that Wanda and Vision were two of the most powerful individuals in the comics. So we hadn't really seen their power or their full potential in the movies. But uh, one division actually explored into this and it gave them, it made them amazing. So if you haven't seen one division, please go watch one division. But we're going to talk about Falcon now because Falcon was a whole different deal. People were saying that it was going to be like a, a buddy cop um, show and, and you know it was gonna it was sort of gonna be like lethal weapons well it did feel like lethal weapons um it it was i think it was a little more than that a couple episodes ago i talked about how falcon and the winter soldier tackled some of the social issues that are happening at the moment and that ha- and you know and once we got the arc for uh isaiah bradley we even went back to things that had happened in the past so I think that more than a so if, if if Disney and Marvel were trying to do a social experiment for this show, they totally did. And they pulled it off. They pulled it off because this show is so, so powerful. It, it touches you. You can relate to this. You can see happening. I mean, it's a mirror image of what's happening. Now, in, in the sense of the show, like the content, um, I will be honest with you and I will say this. The show feels like it could have had a bigger ending in the sense, and, I'll, and let me explain that, in the sense that we only had six episodes. That means that we only had a month and a half of these characters. When we got to One Division towards the end, it had already been a month, I mean two months of, of the show. So we were just like so used to the buildup and this show is a little different. In that sense, because it was shortened, um, we had a lot more action. There was a lot more of that um, authentic Marvel action scenes that people had been craving. Um, but when we get to the finale, it feels like the story didn't end. And I, I think the reason why is, is that. And I think uh, Marvel and Disney pulled it off by wanting us want more of these characters. I mean... We only got one episode of Sam Wilson as Captain America. We wanted to see more of that. We would have loved to see more of that. Um, Bucky being free, completely free, guilt-free. And we'll talk about that right now when we, te- when we get to uh, character arc. Um, so the show overall was an amazing show. It did what it was supposed to do. And, and this is where fans like myself and like uh, all of you listening um, – this is where we overhype in our heads things. And sometimes when it doesn't meet our expectations, um, then we think, oh, the the show sucked because it, the, the, this didn't happen. No, the show was about Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Falcon progressing or, 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 or growing into Captain America. And the show did that. I mean, 
as a fan, I would I would have loved to see Thunderbolts. Yes. Uh, would I love for them to connect with one division? Yes. Or Spider Man or the Scrolls, um, Secret Invasion, in, in Invasion. Um, would I have loved to see all those things? Yes, I would have. But in the end, the essence of the show was about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And we got that. We really did. It's just that as fans, we overhyped these things. It's kind of like the Mephisto thing. Uh, you know, all of you that know me personally know that when I would talk about one division, I would totally talk about Mephisto's going to show up. And if it's not Mephisto, it's going to be Nightmare. And that didn't happen because the story was about Wanda and Vision. And we have to be okay with that. Now, this show serves as a catalyst because it's going to set up everything else coming forward. So we're going to talk about a couple things today. So um, bear with me. The first thing that I want to talk about is car character arc. Excuse me. Uh, character arc. And how about let's start with Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson started this show with a contradiction. He didn't know what to do or in his head he thought he was doing the right thing by turning in the uh, Captain America shield. At the end of Endgame, we see him talking to Old Man Cap and Old Man Cap giving him the shield. And, you know, when Falcon picks it up, because he's Falcon, you know, we're going we're gonna to change him to Captain right now, but he was Falcon at that point. He picks up the shield and, and Cap asks him, how does it feel? He says, it feels like it's not mine, like it belongs to someone else. Um, there's a couple things that Sam was dealing with that we see progressing in the show. For one, we have to remember that Sam Wilson looked up to Captain America. And I think even though we know that Captain America is a fictional character, to some extent, we all look up to Captain America. I'm actually wearing my Captain America shirt right now. But we all look to Captain America, the cut clean guy who would lay down his life for anybody, the guy that um, would, would step in and stop the bullies, the guy that would... Uh, pick up the small guy, the guy that would speak when those didn't have a voice. That is Captain America. That is Steve Rogers. Yes, that is Steve Rogers. So in one sense, we see Falcon struggling with this. Because now he has to deal with, how can I fill the shoes of Steve Rogers? That was one thing. But as the, as the show progresses, we see that there was an internal thing that was deeper than just how do I feel in cap shoes. And it, it and it's the idea of that the government would not accept a black man as Captain America. This is where Isaiah Bradley comes in. For those that don't know, um, and this is the part of the show where we try to educate. And, and you know, I learn as I go. I'm no expert. I speak from what I learn. Of, of course, that there's probably more out there and there's probably someone that knows more. So, but this is where the educational part comes in. Isaiah Bradley's story comes based on the uh, Tuskegee uh, experiments that were happening in the 1930s. In episode two, if you haven't seen it, episode two of the, uh, of the show, we talked about it. And what happened was 600 black men in this country were tricked into thinking they were uh, getting treated for whatever disease but in reality they were given syphilis and instead of curing them the government actually experimented on them and actually let them die to see how syphilis would react to see how long it would take to whatever other other things they were looking at this was one of the most horrible things to happen in our nation. One of the most horrible things. There's a lot of horrible things that, that has happened in the past and that are still happening in the past. But this is huge because the comics actually, you know, it's, it's and, and we talked about this in that show too. The comics in the past were about propaganda and there was a lot of racism, sexism. But when we get the story arc of Isaiah Bradley, we see a different view we get the changes and this show actually tackles on that and so going back to falcon this is where he struggles in being captain america not just because of the shoes he has to fill 
you know, what Steve Rogers left behind. And this is where we'll get to John Walker in a bit, but John Walker referenced this when he is about to go and take the stage as Captain America. He knows that there's a big deal, but he has it a little easier because he's a white man. But Falcon, it's a different story. He's a minority. He's black. He knows that people are not going to be okay with this. And he referenced that in the last episode. He says, some of you hate me even now. Some of you are not going to accept me. You know, that's basically what, that's what he was saying. Um, and this is something that Sam had to deal with. We see Bucky bugging him over and over throughout the show, telling him, why did you turn the shield? And Fal we always see Falcon giving him some other excuse, you know, or trying to avoid the question. You don't understand. You wouldn't know. When we finally get to Isaiah Bradley and we see his suffering, we see the thing he's going through, then Fa uh, Falcon finally opens up and tells Bucky, hey, you would never understand what it feels like or what it's like to get a shield when you're black and you've been a black man because people are going to doubt you. People will look uh, bad at you. People are going to hate you. And basically, that's what happened. They didn't even give Sam a chance. He turned into S.H.I.E.L.D. And we see that a government official just said, hey, you did the right thing. Yeah, he did the right thing because he was, they were never going to accept them as Captain America. So we see that struggle in Sam. And then we, we have this thing where um, in episode five, we have Isaiah Bradley talking into his ear and Isaiah Bradley, you know, he had been through a lot and he's at the end of his life. He's telling like, hey, you know, no one better knows. No one knows about me. And, and in the show, it's a little different in the comics. In the show, 30 years, uh, he was in prison for saving his platoon, for saving his buddies, his war buddies. And instead of getting recognition, instead of. Um, receiving applause instead of receiving any sort of, uh, uh, you know, achievement awards, nothing. He was thrown in jail for 30 years. And while he was there, he was being experimented because he says that there were 300 men, black men who received the super soldier serum. Some of them died. And for some reason he didn't die and, and the serum actually worked. So for 30 years, he was being tested on. And that was such a hard thing to see. When he lifts up his shirt and you see the scars of all the experiments they've done on this man. So when we get to episode five, we see Isaiah Bradley at the end of his at the end of the line. He's already given up. He tells uh, f basically he tells Falcon, hey, you know, give up the idea of the notion that people are going to accept you. They're just not going to. That's f that's foolishness. Like, you know, give up the battle. This is a battle we won't win. And for an instant that, you know, that. That, you know, uh, that was a seed planted in Sam's mind and in his heart. The maybe, just maybe, no matter what he did, people would not accept him. And, you know, we, we can say that maybe Isaiah Bradley was talking, talking out of hate, bitterness uh, towards the people that did him wrong. And, you know, why wouldn't he feel this way? But I think the bigger story here is that you should never give up. And I think this was such an amazing thing that Marvel did. And not only for, uh, um, you know, blacks in the U.S., but for all minorities. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. We have been wrong in the past, but we have the power to change those things now. We will no longer stay in the shadows. We will no longer take the abuse. We will no longer just, you know... Let people roll us, roll over us and, and, and look down upon us. You know, this is where we say, look, it's been messed up in the past, but now I have the power to change things. And that's what Sam Wilson did. He could have stayed at his sister's house. He could have stayed fixing the boat. And he could have stayed as Falcon. But he took on the challenge because he knew it was bigger than him. And it was bigger than the issues. He knew that he needed to be this person to make the change. And one of my favorite lines from this episode, um, from the last episode, from the finale, 
when you know he saves the um he, he saves the government officials the grc officials um and you know we see it's so crazy um i love that part because when he's pushing that truck up sam doesn't have the super soldier serum sam only has tech you know he's kind of like the batman of the uh, you know he's kind of like the batman of the marvel um obviously he's not moon knight is is, is the, like the batman of the marvel of marvel universe but you know what i mean um you know where batman doesn't have superpowers but he has money and he has tech um you know or like iron man in in that sense they got money they got brains well sam doesn't have money sam has tech that was given to him right and we see him and we see uh red wing actually i think he 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 turned into two separate drones to push and to push up this truck and that was such an amazing thing to do you know cuz everyone starts reacting and, you know, he uh, a little earlier in that scene, he introduces himself as Captain America. They tell him, who are you? And he's like, I'm Captain America. And then we see the transition where he's like, I don't want that name. So now he says, look, I I, I, I want to be Captain America because I, I, I can be a, of change. Um, and my favorite line, my favorite line is when he, he's giving that speech, he says, I don't have superpowers. But my superpower is to believe that we can do better. I was like, oh, my God, that is so amazing. And it really touched me to say I don't have superpowers. But if I had a superpower, the superpower that I hold is the belief and the hope that we can do better. And that is such a huge lesson for all of us because we can sit here and say, look, the world's crap. There's injustices all over the place. Things aren't going to change. You know, uh, to, this week we got, um, you know, that officer um, that killed uh, um, George Floyd. You know, he finally got uh, his verdict as guilty as he, he was. But, you know, we had to wait 330 days for the system to work. And, you know, obviously there's there's a whole bunch of processes that need to happen for for to declare someone guilty. Right. Um, actually, you know, I, I was actually going to earlier this week, I was going to make a show. I was going to do a podcast, an episode on, on that alone, on the process, because I did see a lot of people say this, you know, it took 330 days for him to be declared guilty. You looked at that video and you knew he was guilty. And we can sit and, and just say, look, the world's, you know, down the gutter. You know, there's no justice. But it has to start with us. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons that Falcon teaches us. And it's that you need to, you need to hold on hope for our fellow humans, for, the, for our people. You need to hold on hope that we can do better. That we can do better. It starts with us. And I, and I talked about that in the last episode. It starts with us. If we want things to change, the change needs to start with us. But we need to hold on hope that maybe, no matter how crappy people are, no matter how big of jerks they are, no matter how many injustices there are, someone out there will do the right thing. And I think that is one of, uh, you know, if I, and I can, we can talk about Falcon and I just don't want to talk about, uh, I'm sorry, the new Captain America, because um, I, I want to talk about some other stuff too. But, you know, we can totally talk about just his speech alone and how amazing that was, how it touched so many people. And then the whole world was watching in the last episode, you know, in, in, in the fourth episode, the whole world was watching. In the fourth episode, the whole world watched at the end when John Walker killed the Flag Smasher with the shield. And, you know, we get that scene with the shield bloodied up. But now we see Captain America. And if you guys notice, in the back um, of the shot was John Walker himself nodding and agreeing with what Falcon was saying. And, you know, let me say this. I don't hate... Um, 
I don't hate John Walker. He was sadly he was just put in a place where he wasn't going to win. He just wasn't going to win. He was and that's so sad about him cuz he was actually trying to do good and we'll get to him in a bit. Um but but Captain America Sam Wilson, you know? We have to get used to that now. Captain America Sam Wilson really is our Captain America. And I'll tell you why. When we think of Captain America, usually we think of Steve Rogers as, you know, someone with blonde hair, tall, the muscles, right? Blue eyes and a white complexion. But this last episode showed us that you can still be a superhero without having to meet the standards of what society tells you you need to meet. That is huge. Because how many times have we felt like, oh, I'm not good enough to do something because of the color of my skin, because I'm a minority, because I don't hold this, I can't do that. And how many times, how many, how many times have we just given up on that? And Falcon is the proof that you can be a superhero without the money, you know, you know, so, uh, uh, Iron Man had the money to make uh, all those suits and, and the brains to make it happen, you know, um, Sure, Sam has tech too, but, you know, that's something that was given to him. You know, so maybe if you could look at it this way. You don't need to have superpowers. You don't need to have the crazy tech. You just need an opportunity. You need to be given an opportunity to be able to do good in the world. And, you know, I want to wrap it up with Sam here. Sam is going to be an amazing Captain America because this is the Captain America we can all relate to. The minority. This is our Captain America. This is the Captain America that doesn't have superpowers, but he holds on hope that people can do better. You know, and he just broke so many dang barriers. He really did. You know, and that's a huge one. Captain America, you know, now he is Captain America without having to be white. Without having to have superpowers, he's Captain America, and 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 I relate to Zemo here. You know, I bring I bring the conversation to Zemo. Zemo said, I believe in episode three, he says, "Look," or episode four actually, he says that uh, Steve Rogers was a supremacist. Steve Rogers was a supremacist because of the ideals of thinking that someone's better. And if you look up the word supremacist, it's basically you know holding ideals that one person or a group of people are above others. And if you think about it, he was right. And it's the the barriers that people created. You know, in order to be a super soldier, you needed to have all these things, right? Um, but we see Sam break those barriers and bring those barriers down. And towards the end, you know, even Isaiah Bradley agreed with him. Told him, hey, you're doing an amazing thing. He tells him you have a, a great battle ahead of you. But he basically gives him his blessing. And we see Isaiah Bradley turn around. Turn around and... Hopefully, going forward, I would love to see more of Isaiah Bradley. You know, because I, I think that maybe we can have some more flashbacks. We can have a lot more in his life that could be br uh, brought up in film. Um, and so, with that being said, I don't know if you guys heard, but there's already rumors of Captain America 4 happening. So, obviously, I mean, we probably won't see Steve Rogers. We probably will see Captain America Sam Wilson version of Capt. And I am so excited for that because there is so many things that they can do with this film. Um, Captain America, Sam Wilson. We can probably see more of the struggle, the social struggle for people to accept him. If you, if you actually see and you pay attention to the show, the people that accept him are actually minorities. So we got to see the rest of the people. How do they react to Sam Wilson as Captain America? But, you know, he did, a, he did a good thing. And that speech, man, that, that speech moved you when you hear Sam Wilson. So if you haven't seen uh, the latest episode, I suggest you go and check it out. I want to talk about Bucky for a second. Sergeant Barnes. Wow, 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 wow. How far this character has come. When we see Bucky in the first film of Captain America, the first Avenger, we, you know, we see 
we see him, uh, you know, at first as being the, the best friend that always got the girls and it was always better looking than Steve Rogers. And then we see him play second fiddle to Steve Rogers when he got the Super Soldier Serum and he became captain. Um, and, and we saw him that, he, you know, he was he was OK with that. He was there for his friend. Um, and, and we always saw he, he had the good heart, just like Rogers to do to do the right thing. Sadly, obviously, you know, we know the story. He gets kidnapped by he gets picked up by Hydra when he falls off the train. Um, he's given a metal arm because he's losing his arm in the fall. And he becomes the Winter Soldier. And now, oh man, if you guys, you know, I believe it was episode five, that first scene of Bucky being freed from the program in his head of the, the Winter Soldier. And, 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 and it was so deep to see him cry and to actually be free. And it was tears of, you know, at first it was like tears of him trying to resist. And then it was tears of relief that no longer the programming was there. And, and when I watched that scene, I, I couldn't help but think how much he suffered and how much it must have hurt for him to go through all those years of not being able to control his actions. And we see that in the Winter Soldier whenever, uh, and, and we see that too in, uh, not in Winter Soldier, I'm sorry, we, we see that in, in Civil War. When Zemo is, is saying the lines and he's like, you don't want to do this. And we actually see him suffering listening to those lines that activate the, 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 the program in his head. And when we, get, uh, when we get Bucky in this show, in the first episode, we get a Bucky who can't sleep. We get a Bucky who has nightmares. We get a Bucky that, you know, is just suffering, trying to adjust to a world that's not his because just like Captain America, he was put on ice, except that every now and then he would come out and, and you know, and had to kill people. Um, and now he has to deal with fitting in. But bigger than that, he has to deal with his demons. He has to deal with all the stuff he did in the past, all the things that he did that he has to live with. And, and I think one of, of the crazy um, connections uh, that they put him together with was Yori. You know, that, that, that old man that, you know, the Winter Soldier killed his son. Um, and we see uh, Bucky trying to make amends, you know. And I think one of the biggest character arcs here for Bucky is the fact that he can leave, uh, live his, uh, leave, sorry, leave his past behind. You know, he was carrying that book with uh, Cap's notes, trying to, you know, Hold on to hope for Cap in a way. Trying to live the way Cap did instead of living his life. And then, you know, having to relive all the stuff he did as the Winter Soldier. And to finally see him smile like a true, genuine smile at the end of the show. Really brings you how far his character has come. And my prediction for, for Bucky's char character arc going forward is... We will most likely see him. We will most likely see him in Captain America Four, in whatever Avengers movies are coming, and I also think we might see him in the Wakanda, uh, uh, the the Wakandan uh, TV series that's gonna it's gonna come um, on Disney Plus uh, in a couple years. So we might see him there, and and I would love to see him actually show us more of the White Wolf, right? Not only the, the name. Why is he the White Wolf? Obviously, we know. Uh, you know. Uh, but in the, in 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 the comics, the White Wolf was another white man individual who uh, happened to live in Wakanda, and it was he was Wakandan, but he was white, and he helped. He was, I, I believe, if I'm not wrong, he was in charge of like the secret police, the Wakandan police, and he would go and fight. Um, and so I would like to see Bucky do that, do more good. Um, but honestly. For anyone who has seen Marvel for the past 10 years and to see him come this far and have this redemption arc, which, you know, you can't blame Bucky for the stuff he did as a Winter Soldier. He wasn't in control, but he got his own redemption for, say, he was able to le uh, leave his past behind and, and the book behind. And, you know, I don't long no longer need it because he can he put his demons to rest and. I would have loved to seen 
I would have loved to see the scene of him and, and Yori talking about what you know what he did to his son, and you know we we're left to wonder if Yori forgave him for killing his son. We don't know what happened um, after that. So, but whatever happened between them two, um, whether he forgave him or not, it it put the demons to rest for Bucky, because now he can move on, and and we see him move on. He's happy now. And I just can't wait to see him. That brings me to John Walker. U.S. agent. For anyone that's read the comics, when we were introduced to uh, John Walker at the end of the first episode, and then we see him in, in episode two, we knew where they were going with this. There was no way he was going to end up being Captain America because, you know, the whole show was to set up Sam to become Captain America. But... You know, for the moment, for the, for the few, for the few uh, episodes that we got to see um, John Walker be Captain America, we see an individual who was just getting, he was, who's being crushed literally by the pressure to be Captain America. Captain America has to be cut clean, you know, but some of the things that people don't understand about being Captain America is that sometimes in order to do the right thing, you're going to have to piss off a whole bunch of people or you're going to have to rebel against what uh, the people above you say. And that's what we we saw um, Steve Rogers do. You know, and now we, we go to uh, John Walker and John Walker is he's doing his best. And, you know, I, I even said hashtag not my cap, but not because I, I didn't like him as an individual, but because, you know, it was just it's just weird seeing someone else and not Sam, obviously, because that's, you know, those that have read the comics know that that's the next person that that, that should have gotten the shield. Um, and that's what the show was setting up. Sadly, he was a bystander and he was a victim of, of this. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the actor that played um, John Walker actually got a lot of hate from people, you know, like in real life. And and I just I just think, man, how toxic are we gonna be? And we're gonna attack and hate somebody who is just playing a role in a movie. It's not like you know this 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 actor went in real life and pretended to be Captain America. No, he's just playing a part. Um, and so that goes to show how powerful the show was. Um, and it shows people's immaturity as well for people you know people uh, hating the character. And even uh, Kevin Feige spoke up about this about people. Um, saying hateful things towards this actor for playing John Walker. So we get John Walker. John Walker is an individual who is being crushed, literally being crushed by the pressure of being Captain America. Since the beginning, from the beginning, we see him struggle. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll say this, I honestly thought he already had the, the super soldier serum. Um, you know, just by the way he, he threw the shield and, you know, he, he was saying that his body was being... Um, studied by the, the MIT uh, and, and, and all this other stuff. And, and it just made me wonder, maybe, maybe, just maybe, maybe he has some type of exogene already. Because, I mean, it was, I don't know, it was just bizarre, I guess, for me. And, you know, obviously we have Battlestar, who, rest in peace, Battlestar, um, you know, he got killed off, again, a victim of, of the brutality and, and and the childishness of Carly, um, and we'll get to the Flash Masters in a bit, but um, you know all those things. It was just like, you know, John Walker deep down knew that he wasn't being accepted, and that he wasn't going to be looked good upon. I mean, it was just crazy to see him really try so hard to be accepted. Um, you know, when, when the, uh, the Royal Guard, the secret Royal Guard goes to pick up Zemo, he tries to introduce himself, um, and, and Bucky tells him, hey, you're gonna wanna fight, you know, um, uh, Falcon tells him, hey, you might wanna fight Bucky first before you go messing with them, because, you know, they, they, they're gonna kick your butt, man, um, and he just tries so hard, and you see the pressure, uh, when he's signing autographs, and he's just like, you know, uh, battle start to ask him hey how when you know how when is when does it get tiring of you know signing signing so many so many uh, uh autographs and stuff and we just see him 
crushing under the pressure of being Captain America. Um, when they go to get Carly in that episode uh, where Battlestar dies, um, it, you just see him struggle so much with being Captain America. It's not easy. It's not easy being Captain America. And he really tried. And, you know, I I will make his case. He tried his best to be the best Captain America he could. But he just didn't make the cut. Because in the end, his own, you know, his own self-doubt made him not fit for the job. And I see it this way. Will F- Falcon doubt himself? Will Sam Wilson doubt himself now being Captain America? Yeah, for sure. We saw him struggle with doubt throughout the whole show. But the thing is that Falcon or Sam Wilson, sorry, Sam Wilson, Captain America, he's the type of person that gets up and says, I will try. I will keep pushing. And we saw that John Walker was just trying to find an easier way to do things. You know, he was trying to throw his his uh, his weight around and, and telling people what to do. And, you know, I saw that with the CR, uh, GRC soldiers when he tells them, like, you know, search everybody. And I was like, you never saw Cap do that. He never did. And Cap will never do that to the public. He, he really struggled. And then when he gets the super soldier serum, he thinks that things are going to get fixed. But it, it was the worst thing for him to happen. Now, where do we go from here? We're going to see him become um, U.S. agent. U.S. agent. And, you know, it was obvious. It was obvious that this was happening, that this was going to happen, that he was going to become U.S. agent. Um, but I, I, I really want to see, because he, he definitely had a rede- redemption arc in, in this show. You know, he was given uh, the shield unfairly, we can say. Um he wasn't liked. He did. He did a, a lot of wrong calls. He took, you know, um, he killed the flag smasher in front of everybody. But in the end, we we sort of see him, you know, uh, turn it around. And you know, and for those that have read the comics, know that he he really wants to do good, except that he just he his his love for himself to be in the spotlight is bigger than his will to do the right thing. I believe, and, and and this is what kills him, and this is what messes up his, you know, the way people view him. And it doesn't matter how many uh, stars and, and how many awards he's got, the fact that he rather be in the spotlight instead of being the little guy, you know, tells you a lot, tells you a lot about him. But uh, where are we gonna see him again? At the end of the show. Uh, at the end of the episode, we see him receive the U.S. agent uh, uniform, and we see him talking to Valentine, and they talk about Zemo, and she refers to him as his friend. Um, and we'll get that in a bit, but I believe that in the Thunderbolts or the Dark Avengers, we might see him come again. So don't think that uh, John uh, John Walker is gone. You know, he no no no, he's coming back. He's coming back. Let's talk about Zemo now. OMG, Zemo. <sighs> that scene in episode three where he's dancing and pumping his fist. Man, that it was one of the best uh, z- scenes. And when we s- meet when we meet Zemo in uh, Civil War, we see a whole different character, right? We see a whole different character. We see a Zemo that um, basically it- it's fueled by hatred towards the Avengers, towards super soldiers, um, that really didn't change. He's still, you know, obviously probably uh, being in prison gave him a little more time to process the death of his family. But his mission to destroy all super soldiers is still there. That, that hasn't gone anywhere. Um, but it's just the way that he was shown in, in here, the, his way of thinking, even his fighting style, just how smart he was to get around all these things um, really gave him another light. And I was very happy to see this, this version of Zemo. A lot of people didn't like it. I really did because, you know, Zemo's smart, Zemo's smart. And we got to see that 
We really, really got, and he's so funny. He's so funny when, you know, um, the Royal Guard, the, the Wakandan Royal Guard is fighting uh, with Captain America, John Walker. Um, you know, he's just like drinking tea, just looking for the perfect moment to just leave. Um, the things he would say. He's a big Narnia fan with the Turkish Delight thing. Man, he is such an interesting character. And I actually was glad to see that he got his, he fulfilled his mission. Whether he, he didn't pull the trigger at the end, but he destroyed the Flag Smashers. Now, he doesn't know that there was one more in the Hudson that Falcon, uh, I'm sorry, Captain America goes save, uh, goes to pick up. So we'll, that's interesting right there. That's interesting. Uh, don't think because the Flag Smashers are gone and dead um, that there's going to be no more Super Soldier. No, 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 no. This this is a big thing in the comics still in, in Marvel. Um, and there's always there's always going to be somebody who wants the Super Soldier Serum. So, Zemo. Zemo. I will probably see Zemo and, uh, you know, Thunderbolts. And we know that's coming up. Um, and also, I believe we might see him in Armor Wars. Um, we might see him in Secret, uh, Secret Invasion as well. And whatever next Avenger movie we get, I'm pretty sure we're going to see him again. He's not going anywhere soon. He's not going away anywhere, any, anytime soon, sorry. Um, we know he's in the raft again. And we know that General Ross controls the raft. So, I mean, it's it's a long time coming. We're going to see the Dark Avengers or the Thunderbolts. We have to see them. I actually, maybe, you know, thinking about it right now, we might even see him in the She-Hulk uh, series. Just because, uh, you know, it's hard to think when we will see him again. But I'm sure the impact he had and, and how positively, uh, positively people see him now, uh, you know, and he's well liked by the fans. So we might see him any, uh, soon, sooner than we think. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this because this is one of the things that Falcon, uh, I'm sorry, Falcon the Winter Soldier did misdirect so much. And that is the power broker. The power broker turns out to be Sharon Carter, and I called it. I, you know, my friends, for those that talk to me and, 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 you know, always ask me for my opinion on things, I said, you know, I feel like we are going to see Sharon Carter become the power broker. Now, there's a lot of things that don't make sense in the show. It seems like little pieces, pieces and parts of the of the scene don't make sense. You know, they they don't relate to others, and that's because there's this huge thing that happened. Um, that there was gonna there was a, a story plot that there was a, a man made virus that was supposed to kill the refugees, um, and so just think about that right now. There was gonna be a virus that was killing the refugees, um, and people were gonna be dying left and right. This is why we see in episode two, the Flag Smasher stealing vaccines was for this same reason. The reason why Marvel and Disney decided to cut this was because of the COVID. Because of the pandemic and all this stuff that's happening in the world still. Um, and we, there was so many things left, uh, you know, in, in, in the cutting room floor that I, I want to see what was left. Because obviously the, there's a whole bunch of storylines that didn't, Made sense, but didn't make sense. And one of those storylines is Sharon Carter. She was so mysterious. The whole the whole episode, the whole show was she was so mysterious. Since we see her, uh, you know, till the end, she was still mysterious. She was so 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 mysterious. There was so much things that we didn't know. How did she get there? Um, so let's talk to let's talk about her being the 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 power broker. Um. Obviously, Zemo had never met the power broker. He just refers to him as knowing, you know, him and knowing about him. So he'd never seen him. And it's not, and you know, people are like, oh, this was a misdirect by Marvel. And, you know, uh, it, they were saying that it was a it was a him. It turned out to be a her. Um, sure, I get that. But you think about it this way. Um, you know, the world sometimes is so, is so sexist. And even in, in, in the bad guys, maybe they wouldn't take a female power broker series. So maybe she had to hide the fact that that was her and had to pretend like there was someone else. Uh, you know, kind of like a placeholder in, in order to, to get power. Um, and that's just a theory. 
But, you know, it's just so crazy the way they set her up. And when they reveal, you know, I as I as much as I knew that she was going to be the power broker, I expected a bigger reveal. I wanted a bigger reveal. I wanted to be something like, yeah, this is the power broker and show us really why you're the power broker. Show us your power, show us your extent, you know, show us really why you're the power broker. We didn't get that. We didn't get that. We just know that Carly knew that she was a power broker. Carly died, shot by, by Sharon Carter. And then, uh, you know, the other villain died too. They knew um, that she was a power broker now. So at the end of the show, in the post credit scene, we see Sharon Carter get pardoned. And we see her talk about, we, we see her leave the courtroom and we see her talking to somebody. We don't know who she's talking about, who she's talking to, sorry. But we know she's talking about how they're going to have access to weapons, to secret, uh, the gov secret, uh, government secrets and all this stuff. And so it makes you wonder even more, is she really the power broker? And after that, I, I thought of this. What if she's just another Trevor the same, you know, sort of what they did with the Mandarin and uh, Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. Remember, we got the Mandarin. wasn't really the Mandarin. And then, you know, later on, we see him get picked up. And, and, and you know, he's, he was going to get killed for using the name of the Mandarin. So maybe, what if maybe Sharon Carter is just the, the face of the of the operation. But in, we're going to get to the, the power broker and it's a bigger deal. Maybe... Maybe the power broker is the a bigger player, and we're just not ready to see him. Or he's not ready to show himself to us yet. Um, if that's the case, the only thing, the only person that I would think could play the power broker might be General Ross. But then it doesn't make sense because he already knows the government secrets. He works for the government, so that wouldn't make sense. But, I mean, talking about character power, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know who else could be, but just the whole Sharon Carter thing is just really bizarre and weird. So where are we going to see Sharon Carter next? I believe we're going to see her in Armor Wars as well. Um, if for those that don't know, Armor Wars is a show coming up in Disney Plus that uh, Don Cheeto is going to be the star for this um, War Machine. And he's going to go around. Basically, the whole show is going to be him going around and picking up the... Uh, the star tech left around and that are people that people are using for you know obviously trying to take the world and bad guys are trying to get powered up using his tech so um that's the next play we're gonna the next place sorry that we're gonna see uh uh war machine and i believe that's where we're gonna see sharon carter we will see uh sharon carter there with that being said i have to talk about valentine um you know she her her character is so mysterious so some people were saying that maybe she was the power broker. It could be, could be she could be the real power broker, or maybe uh, she's working with Sharon Carter and forming like a, uh, you know, kind of like what they did with Birds of Prey, where it's a whole movie of just badass women, you know, taking charge. So maybe that's what they're setting up. You know, maybe we're gonna get this this movie uh, of just all women being badass um kind of, we kind of saw that in infinity war um them fighting together and we saw that too in in an end game you know when all the women got together to fight you know that was pretty awesome so maybe they're they're trying to set that up with sharon carter and valentine we don't know time will tell but most likely we'll see sharon carter in armor wars just because of the tech just because she's after that now um so yeah so we have to look up for that. Um, I, I wish I had more to say about her character, but it, I mean, her, it's just the show did that thing where it was left mysterious, but it was because of the pandemic and the whole storyline that they had to cut. So a lot of things were left in the air. Lastly, let's talk about Flag Smashers. Um, the Flag Smashers really were fighting for a noble cause. It's just the way they were doing it uh, wasn't the proper way and obviously it's obvious it's obvious since the beginning that they were going the wrong route in order to achieve their message and now they're dead most of them are dead carly's dead and then the other ones got blown 
in, in that truck uh, by Zemo's butler, which that was insane. And you know, there's one left. So where do we go from here? I mean, I don't think uh, Marvel and Disney are going to just left a loose end. You know, they're going to leave that there hanging, that thread hanging. I'm sure they're, it's going to come back. Uh, maybe that's how we're going to get the super soldier again, uh, the serum again come around. They're going to take his blood, experiment on him, sadly, maybe. Um, or maybe he'll do it willingly in order to get pardoned. We don't know could happen maybe he ends up in the maybe he ends up at the raft with Zemo uh, Zemo might kill him um, and maybe this is how General Ross gets his superpowers I don't know um, we might we might get more of that though in, in, in Black Widow um, but the Flag Smashers are dead um, but I'm sure the cause is, is still not done I'm, I'm sure there we'll see the Flag Smashers pop up again um, because we see that they were infiltrated everywhere now. So I'm sure that Marvel will do something with that. Um, and when you talk about the Flag Smashers, you can't ignore the elephant in the room. And it was the issue of immigration. Um, we're seeing that right now. Mass, masses and masses of people are, you know, just migrating by groups, big groups, and then there's a big old chaos at the border now. Um, kids in cages, people sleeping outside, people dying trying to get here to this country, uh, to the U.S. Um, but that's not just happening in our world, in, in our I'm sorry, not just happening in our country, but it's happening in other places too. In Europe, it's happening. Um, people are willing to put their their life on the line to live a better life, and you know when they get to that place, you know people want to kick them out. Um, and it was so raw, though. That is so raw because it's so real. It's something that that we're seeing now. We're seeing now. Um, obviously, the way the flag smashers approach this whole thing was the wrong way. Um, and then I bring this back, bring the conversation back to Falcon. He now he 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 does this speech where he convinces the uh, the GRC officials to give up. And he says, we have to do better. So what does that sort of tells us in the real world? We have to do better. This whole issue of immigration and people coming in to our country and to other countries is never going to go away. People will always are always going to look for to better their lives, to better their families. So we have to do better. We have to, you know, fight for the rights of immigrants um, you know, it's so sad how, you know, how immigrants in this country suffer. Um, and so we have to fight for that. We really have to fight for that. And, you know, no matter what happens, guys, don't forget that there's still kids in cages at the border who are being, you know, teared apart from their families, who are infected with lice. Most of them have covid it's a very sad thing and it's happening this isn't a marvel show this is the real world so we have to you know you know whether you're a republican or democrat um you know they always talk about fixing immigration and we will do this we will do that but i believe that it will never get done unless the people get up and we really pressure the government to do something about it Otherwise, they're always going to promise, no matter what what uh, party you belong to. They will always promise something about immigration. But unless we all get together and put pressure on the issue, nothing's going to happen. But just like uh, Captain America, we might not have superpowers, but we can hold on for hope. Or we can hold on to hope that people will do better. So let's let's be better. With that being said, we have reached the end of this episode. Thank you for joining the conversation today. Um, there was a lot to talk about, especially about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But we talked about some uh, social, uh, you know, uh, problems and themes um, in the show and the real world. So, with uh, you know, I always finish the show with this: um, be good, uh, 
um, be kind to each other and always always find an opportunity to do good stay safe